How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, Madeline. Thanks so much for joining us on Tomorrow by Today. We're so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness, of course. I mean, Sarah, I've been watching a lot of you lately. I feel like I could just keep re-watching the Outer Banks constantly and the fans are obsessed with you. What has it been like to see the reactions of all the fans since season two hit? It's been amazing. It's honestly, it's been really cool. I mean, it's crazy because it feels like, you know, we did it the first time and, you know, people had such a positive reaction for the first season. And so there's a little part of you that's like, okay, so it, it worked season one. Is it going to work season two? And, um, and it feels like overall the, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive and, really, really wonderful. And um, I just I feel really grateful. That's amazing. I mean, every single episode, it's like you didn't know, obviously, what was going to happen next. It was so intense. But this season in particular, it seemed even more physically taxing than even season one did. I know that you had to actually pass a swim test um, in order to get this role. But what else goes into the physicality that comes with playing Sarah Cameron? Um, I think a lot of it, uh, there, I mean, it, it's incredibly physical. I think, you know, it's, it's such a fast paced show. So, um, there's just a lot of learning on the fly and we are incredibly involved with all of our stunts. We don't do all of our stunts, but we're always involved. We're always there with our stunt doubles who are incredible. Um, and, and we're always, you know, trying to, you know, put our input in and, um, and, and just do what we can. And, um, it's just a very hands-on show, which is, it really helps too, because, you know, we have our feet on the ground in a lot of circumstances and it feels like it's, it's an incredible learning opportunity, you know, for me, um, feeling like, or for me, I just feel like it's given me so much to learn from, um take and, and to um and to just grow from um uh, it's been it's been really great yeah so how has your life changed since being a part of this show because it's truly blown up and been in the top 10 of netflix ever since it really hit it's been wild it's been really wild i'm i mean i think i think the main i think the main emotion is gratitude um, I'm just, I'm just really grateful and I'm really grateful for, um, for those who watch the show, for those who love the show as much as we do. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful for the people who, um, I don't know. I, I feel like I, it was when we first started filming season one, it felt like, I think there's always a little bit of imposter syndrome that kind of gets to you and you're just like, I don't know, like, you know, is it, is it going to work? Like, are people going to like it? Yeah. And, um, and so there's always like that, that doubt in yourself. Um, you know, you know, you have something really special, but are people going to actually like it a lot? And then they did. Um, and then, you know, being able to come back for season two and to see the reaction be as positive as it is. It's just been wild. It's been the most incredible experience. And, and we love, we love the fans. We love our audience. And, you know, we're just, we're, I think we're all just collectively really, really grateful. The fans are commenting, it's certainly the best show ever. People have really, um, just especially during this pandemic, I think too, it's really hit a certain place for them because we're all home, obviously, so much. And it was a way for them to stay entertained. I'm curious, Sarah, and I know Sarah, is that this question here, Scooby-Doo, I don't know if you've ever got this before, Madeline, has anyone ever compared Outer Banks to Scooby-Doo? We have. We have, I mean, all throughout season one and even, I mean, even season two, all throughout season one, we all were like, we're literally riding in the mystery machine and we are mystery incorporated and we would literally pick out people like in certain scenes, we'd be like, okay, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. We would compare different characters to who, like who we were in the scene and yeah. it um, it, I don't know. We we always we always made that comparison. There was never not a day that we did not. We were in Scooby Doo, um, and so so yes. So Scooby Doo comparisons always, um, and we also we've watched Scooby Doo a few times as a cast just because why not? And um, just like we'll we'll sit there and we'll be like, oh, <laughs> that's John B or that's Sarah or that's Kiara or JJ. I mean, it's it's very funny. 
Do you think there was actual inspiration that was taken from it? Or do you feel like it was sort of just a coincidence? I don't think so. I, yeah. I feel like it's, I feel like that might be, I think that, I think there are similarities and obviously the, the mystery machine and the Twinkie are a VW bus, which is very fun, but I don't think, I, I think there's, I think it might be a bit of a stretch, but I, I think there are enough similarities where it is a fun comparison to make. Yeah. And we, I mean, we obviously have a good time with it. I mean, we joke about it all the time on set. I love it. The only thing missing is the dog and maybe that's where season three, the dog comes into play. <laughs> dog for a while now it needs to happen but well, I know in my family my brother Mitchell and I we will unpack every single episode together it's almost like we have a book club in my family and I'm curious with your family and friends are they asking you as many questions as you get from the fans of the, the ins and outs of the show no <laughs> no oh, I don't think so no my um my, so my parents just finished season one and, um, and they were, they were just like, it was great. Good job. <laughs> you know, like they're not, I don't think they're as, um, I don't think they're as invested with theories. I think they're just along for the ride and they're having a good time watching it. Um, but I'm always really curious about fan theories and I get really excited when I read them because some of them are really like really in tune with the story. Like they really thought out a lot of these details. Yeah. Um, and I'm super fascinated by it. And, um, and I, I just, I love, I love seeing people so invested and so in love with the show and the characters. They definitely are. And you grew up Madeline in Charleston where mm -hmm. Outer Banks was filmed. What was that like being able to return to your hometown and have that be the backdrop to your breakthrough role? It's super special. Like really, really special. Um, it's I, I mean it's funny because when I first moved out to LA, I you know I was like this is what I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna pursue this and um, I'm gonna do it while I'm young. Like why why not? And um, and then you know Outer Banks came along and it pulled me right back to Charleston. And um, I ended up kind of just like, you know, with, with the people that we shoot with, like with this cast and our crew, like I kind of ended up falling back in love with, I just fell back in love with it. And, um, and we just, it was just such a magical, season one was such a magical summer. And um, it was just this really wonderful serendipitous moment in time that I'll always keep very near and dear to my heart. Yeah, and such a full circle moment too, right? That you just probably can't even predict what happened, but it really did. You went back, yeah. Uh, of, of course, the relationship between Sarah and her father, Ward, was just so intense Ruth. to pure. Yeah, Ruth. Ward. So intense to watch. You know, could you look at Charles Esten, who played that character the same after filming these scenes that were just so mind boggling? It was hard. It was really hard because season one, um, season one, I mean, Chip is amazing. Chip is so much fun to work with. And he's just like, he's such, he's literally like group dad. Um, and it's just really hard. It's really hard to fathom him um, being anything but nice ever. And, and so when he had to, you know, when he really kind of flipped the switch and became like this crazy like war like really embodied ward this season just like sociopathic and terrifying um it was definitely it was definitely hard but sometimes you know you're you're in the middle of a scene and you've just been you know you've just been joking before you were rolling and uh really hard sometimes because you know the person across from you as being this wonderful human being and um and then all of a sudden like you know they're playing this role and it's, it's absolutely terrifying and you know, he's so giving. He's so wonderful in a scene. Um, he's an incredible scene partner, and, and I've learned so much from him. But there have been some times where, like, you know, we've been looking at we, we'll look at each other and we'll break um, because, because, you know, we have such a good time on and off camera, um, and we all do with Chip. He's just he's so much fun. He's he's just like he's just a he brings such amazing energy to set. Yeah, he's really incredible. I mean, it's just amazing how he can. <laughs> Like, what did you say? What did you say? He's so talented. Like, yeah. 
he really, really is. I know that at the end of most episodes, I honestly got nightmares at night once I went to sleep. Oh my God. Did you ever? No, <laughs> no, no. You know, like, it's just because I spend the, I spend more time with him as Chip than I ever do as Ward. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's one of those the things. Balance. Where, like, you know, yeah. Totally. What are some of the things that you would do after a long day of shooting to sort of come, you know, back down and clear your mind? Because they are so intense. I have a glass of wine. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> um, a glass of wine. Um, I'd watch Below Deck. Uh, I would, um, I'd, I, sometimes I'd go to the gym uh, after we wrapped if, if I had enough time and if my call time wasn't too early. Um, sometimes, you know, we try to hang out and just blow off some steam and I don't know, watch a movie or something, you know, just anything, anything to kind of get our minds, anything like kind of like mind numbing yeah. or just like completely get your mind off of what you had been doing that day. But uh, I my glass of wine. Honestly. I hear you. I love though that below deck is your reality show. Like, choice i mean you just can't get enough of life on the water <laughs> yeah you can't you honestly can't it's it's my absolute favorite it is my guilty pleasure always there will never be a time where i'm not i'm not trying to find a below deck episode that i haven't watched yet i love that how fun is that you guys so great what is something that really sticks out to you, Madeline, from season two? Maybe the most memorable scene that you shot. Um, I think one of one of the the most memorable memorable scenes that we shot was definitely um, the any of the swamp scenes and um, anything in Barbados, honestly. Like the swamp scenes were difficult because it was cold. Mm. And um, and we were all just like, we spent three days on the swamp and the final day we had to get in the water and we knew it was gonna be absolutely freezing because there was frost on the ground and it was, I don't know, it was December. And, and we were all just like, oh God, like, you know, and they had to, they put us in, in, in like skin tone um, wetsuits and um, we finally got in and we were just like, let's, let's just shoot it, get in and get out. And they had us in hot tubs. Like after we finished the scene, they'd call cut and they would zoom us over to these hot tubs, these inflatable hot tubs that they had set up for us. And, um, and it was so disgusting by the end of the day, the water in the hot tubs was like just completely like pitch black it was disgusting oh. swamp water so those few days stand out in my mind because they were just absolutely insane and then anything in Barbados because Barbados was so much fun um it was like I mean we were all staying in the same hotel it was cast crew everyone in the same hotel because it, it, it literally felt like being in a college dorm um and I I think the one thing that sticks out in my mind was the car chase in Barbados um, and just like how crazy it was to have these camera rigs on the car and then going through these crazy narrow streets in Barbados and, and just the stunts involved and be, being able to have like a front row seat to, to, to everything that goes on behind the scenes to make those things happen. It's just like it, I mean, the, the process of, of making TV shows and film is just always incredibly fascinating and mind blowing to me still. I'm sure. And especially the with Outer Rings, you can tell that there's just, even when you look at some behind the scenes footage, I don't think we realize as fans how many camera, you know, people are out there, how much really goes into this. It is a big production, um, but clearly that's what makes it obviously come to life in such an impactful way. When you look, Madeline, at your character, what would you say are the main similarities and differences between you, yourself as Madeline, and Sarah Cameron? Um, I mean, sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel like Sarah does dumb things, <laughs> but also so do I. Um, I don't know. I don't, you know, I feel like, I feel like there's, um, I feel like there's a lot of discovery happening happening with Sarah on yeah. in 
we're kind of going with her on that journey through that. And I think the same thing with, with myself. Um, we're both incredibly young and we're still discovering who we are. And, uh, and I think it's, I'm, I'm, I feel really lucky because I feel like it's incredibly cathartic to kind of go through this journey. Um, even though we don't have the same stories, I feel like there are some times where, you know, the scenes for Sarah are incredibly cathartic for Maddie. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a really fun, uh, I don't know. There, there's just a lot to discover and unpack, and I'm, um, I'm, I feel very lucky. That's awesome. And of course, just watching uh, the dynamics of how close you and your castmates really are, also off the screen in real life. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's something that we all can really sort of tell. What is something that you guys all do together when you're not filming? Because we know right now you're all sort of separated. You're filming a movie in Europe. How do you guys keep the bond alive when the cameras aren't rolling? Um. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, last season we would always obviously hang out. I mean, we would do literally whatever we'd go, we'd go grab dinner. We would go out, we would hang out at, you know, whoever's apartment and, you know, watch, watch uh, movies. We watch fights. I mean, literally anything. And, and, you know, this, the season two is obviously a little different because of COVID. Like obviously we tried to hang out when we could, but you know, we tried to stay as safe as we possibly could. Yeah. And so, but beyond that, I think, you know, we're just, what I really love about the bond is, you know, whether or not we're able to, you know, constantly be together or not, like, we're all really incredibly supportive of each other. And, you know, we really love each other. And, um, and we, we try to hang out and see each other when we can. And, you know, right now, like, we're all kind of off doing our, our own things. And, you know, we're all working. And I, I mean, I think what's really wonderful about it is even though we can't necessarily be, be together, we're really proud. And, um, and that's just like a really wonderful, it's just really wonderful. It's a, it's a cool environment to be in. And it's awesome to, you know, to see people that it feels like you've kind of come up with um, going and, and um, succeeding. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all friends. I love that it certainly is great. We're going to incorporate some fan questions now on the screen about the show. Hey. Ella here wants to know, Madeline, how long did you film each day? It depends. I mean, minimum, we will shoot for like 12 hours. Um, and then if, you know, if we're, if we're running over, or we're not getting what we need in time, you know, it'll probably, it, it might go like, over like 13, 14, 15 hours, um, you know, and that's fine. It is what it is, you know, as long as you're getting what, what you need to get for the scene. For the show. Totally. This next question here from Legacy's Power wants to know, if you didn't play Sarah, which character would you love to play? Oh, um, I feel like it'd be fun to play JJ. That would I be love, super fun. Absolutely love JJ. Um, oh. So much fun to see how much Rudy has playing JJ like it's it's such a fun role and and JJ's written so incredibly well and um and Rudy adds so many really fun interesting elements but I I think JJ would be really cool to play super super cool people were also writing in the comments uh if you thought that maybe JJ and Kiara could link up in season three what are your thoughts look I'm never say never um I think that, um, look, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not a writer. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, uh, you never know. You know, <laughs> you genuinely never know. I'm not sure. Um, oh, my goodness. I, we'll just cross our finger for that. Yeah. yeah um, who knows? Exactly. This next question here, what is your favorite part about being Sarah? Um, I think maybe a favorite part about being Sarah is that, you know, she kind of, uh, I think what's really interesting about Sarah is that she kind of goes through the, this transition of like feeling like she, um, you know, has to conform to this idea of who she is based on her family and the people that she's grown up with. And she kind of, you know, bridges that gap to, you know, and comes to realize that family isn't necessarily the, you know, who you're born into. It's, you know, people that you can choose. Um, 
and you don't need to conform to an idea of yourself and yeah. you change you can always change your mind um you know and, and she has that that freedom to choose and she's not defined by any man in her life um and and I, I really love that about her. And I think that's a really fun thing to play. And I, I genuinely do my best to um, to try and, and play that out to the best of my ability, because I think it's, it's very important. It is, and that's a great example to people. When you look back at each episode, is there anything that you wish your character would have done differently this season? Um, I don't. I mean, thinking about the story as a whole, no. Um, because I also have to remember that Sarah is a 16-year-old teenager. And, you know, there are mistakes that will be made along the not Not even mistakes. There, there, are, you know, there are things that happen on the way that they're not mistakes. They're just, they're just things that happen. They're things that happen in a moment, you know, in a heated moment. Sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. And... And that's life, and I kind of love that. Um, and that there, you know, nothing happens perfectly in the show. You know, like everybody kind of does their thing, and and you kind of follow along. But no, I, I don't think there's anything that I would I would say that I wish you'd done differently. There we have it. We're going to take just a couple of more here. Uh, one of the users wants to know how do you become an actor, or we can rephrase this as, you know, what is your advice to someone who wants to get into acting um, and really follow your footsteps? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, there there are a few uh, websites that you can um, you can get on. Um, don't never pay anything up front. Never pay anyone up front who promises to like get you on a show or whatever um, for money. Don't do that. There are plenty of uh, websites like um, Actors Access or um, you know, uh, it's like Breakdown Services. Um, and, and there are plenty of, of roles that you can always self-submit yourself for. Um, sometimes they do charge a membership fee, but, you know, that's fine. Like, they're very reputable. Um, go look for jobs um, as an extra and or a background actor. And um, it, it, it really it gets you on set and you get the experience on set. You can get a feel for if you like it or not, because sometimes they are long hours and it is you know, sometimes some people find it boring. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's just it is it is all something like just just get a feel for it. And it's it's completely, you know, to your liking or not. Um, but I would say just do things to beef up your resume and, um, you know, get get those credits on there and submit yourself and put yourself on tape and get into classes and, um, you know, find a coach and, um, and just just work on it. These are such great tangible tips. I know people are really um, appreciative of you sharing those because I feel like it's so hard, right? Like you want to get into something, but not knowing exactly what steps to take. I mean, just broke it down. I took um, yeah. straight for me. So I mean, that's that's the best. That's the best I can I can do. I love it. Let's talk. Last but not least, there's users who are asking, "How are you doing with your new job? You are in Europe filming Knives Out too." What can you tell us? You are working alongside some of the biggest names, Daniel Craig. What can you expect? <laughs> it's great. It's absolutely, it's been so absolutely mind blowing and insane. Um, I just feel really, really lucky. And I, I just, I go to work every day and I just have like this moment of like, <laughs> how did I end up here? And, you know, we, we get on the set and I get to watch these absolute, you know, pros and like legends, honestly, do, you know, do their jobs. And, um, and I, I mean, like, these are people that I've grown up watching and, you know, admiring. And so it, it's very surreal, but it's also incredibly, um, it's incredibly, uh, informative and I feel like I'm watching them, uh, them and every single time I watch them I feel like I'm learning something new and you know I'm just just feel like I'm trying to soak in as much as I possibly can and then you know in the meantime like apply what I'm learning from them to my performance so I feel like I'm learning on the job and um, I just feel really lucky I feel really really lucky to be a part of this cast and in this story it's incredibly fun and um, I just I can't wait I can't wait for people to uh, to to see it. So exciting! We're all definitely going to be watching when it comes out. 
And we have to ask the question that everyone wants to know, has season three of Outer Bangs started filming yet? No, it hasn't. But y'all will be the first to know when it is. <laughs> uh, it's confirmed, y'all will know. Oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna be waiting. It's so hard to wait so many months when we wanna know what happens next, but you know, you just gotta keep watching season <laughs> two and uh, <laughs> keep on waiting. No blue pill, because why not? Exactly. Madeline, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. You answered all of our questions and uh, we so appreciate it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, take care now. Bye. Bye. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching tomorrow by today.